Hello everyone, we're back again with another critique video. Today on the channel we have Dr. Sunil Rao. Basically what we have is the channel Wired, 11.1 .1 million subscribers. Extremely popular channel online. And the video is entitled Cardiologist Answers Heart Questions from Twitter. If it is on Wired, I know that this is going to be wrong and incorrect. Which means I know that this individual is going to be wrong and incorrect on many fronts and on many accounts. So, with that being said, we're going to jump directly into this video and see how much is actually incorrect. But, before we actually jump into the video, please, if you haven't already, subscribe to the Patreon to gain access to one week early uploads, one extra video per week, ad-free content, and uncensored content, as well as, if you haven't already, buy my book, Contraindicated. There are paperback, hardcover, and ebook options, and I'm currently working on the audiobook option as we speak. So, that being said, now let's jump directly into the video. I'm Sunil Rao, cardiologist at NYU Langone Health. Let's answer some questions from the internet. This is Heart Support. At Dogs Move Silent says, you get served this for breakfast. What's your reaction? My What's my reaction? My reaction is get rid of the fries and the beans. My other reaction would be to question whether the meat that is on that plate is actual meat or if it is 60% soy protein isolate, which is now served in hospitals. And that looks like hospital food, honestly, at least the way it's served. My reaction is I probably didn't order this, but let's take a look at what's on this plate. Processed meats can be very, very high in saturated fat, but they Who cares? Saturated fats have no causal relationship in heart disease whatsoever. The entire reason saturated fats were demonized in the first place was because of its propensity to raise your cholesterol. And biochemically speaking, that has to do with acetyl-CoA concentrations when you oxidize fats versus when you oxidize glucose. And cholesterol is not causal in heart disease. Neither is LDL or any of the lipoproteins. We know the cause of heart disease. It's inflammation and elevated blood pressure, the latter of which is usually a symptom of inflammation. But both cause each other, typically, which just results in a feedback loop. We know this. You should know this as well, but you're an indoctrinated puppy might be high in salt. So for example, salt has no role to play in heart disease. Salt retention is the problem, not salt intake. When your body retains salt, that increases blood volume, which increases blood pressure, which leads to heart disease perniciously over time. What leads to salt retention? A hormone called insulin. When is insulin released? In vast amounts. When one consumes carbohydrates. Carbohydrates being entirely contraindicated for human consumption and unnecessary for human consumption. We're done. Saturated fat and salt are what you should be eating. In fact, doctor. Which are a great source of protein and fiber. Okay, there is no such thing as a great source of fiber because if something is a source of fiber, it is not great. Fiber is a contraindication in the human diet. Please binge my channel if you haven't already to find out why. I have videos on fiber, one in particular that I'm thinking of. Very good video. Also, the protein contained within beans are usually lectins. Lectins are plant compounds that bind to proteins within the body, particularly polysaccharides, so actually complex sugars is what they bind onto, and mimic surrounding proteins, launching an immune response because the body realizes that those proteins are foreign, but since they look identical to surrounding proteins, the body launches an immune response on them as well. Autoimmunity, anyone? Inflammation, anyone? Therefore, heart disease, anyone? Arthritis, anyone? Lectins are plant proteins, though, which means that on a protein label, it is counting lectin content as well. You get protein from animal products, doctor. Beans might be from a can, and canned vegetables and canned beans do have a lot of salt in them. For most of- Who the f cares? Salt is fine, but some of us do- For all of us, salt is fine. It's called salt-sensitive hypertension. And no, people have hyperinsulinemia, doctor, caused by excessive carbohydrate consumption. It can also be caused by seed oils indirectly because it disallows the body from actually withstanding a glucose bolus as well over time because of the inflammation that it induces, lowering redox potential, etc., etc. Using the amount of salt or sodium in our diet can certainly protect you from developing high blood pressure. False. Okay, get rid of the cause, hyperinsulinemia, that causes the retention to occur in the first place. ...are perfectly fine for you. They're a great source of protein. You should eat the yolk. You know, one of the reasons that people say that eggs were bad for you, because they said it was high in cholesterol. It turns out that dietary cholesterol contributes very, very little to your blood cholesterol. True. However, even if it f***ing did, excess cholesterol is simply recycled and or excreted by the body, as is indicated at that given instance in time of consumption. And also, one plus or minus one percent of atherosclerotic plaque is constituted of cholesterol, foam cells, LDL, any lipoproteins whatsoever, all combined. It's largely composed of scar tissue, microcalcis, that can become calcified at later stages, become unstable and rupture, then causing blood clots. Thrombi. Okay, calluses are formed by abrasions. Hint, hint. Contribute to your blood cholesterol is saturated fat. And prepare- Not necessarily, even then. It doesn't f***ing matter, even if it did, and even if it does necessarily, which it does necessarily. Appropriately, eggs can be very low in saturated fat. Okay. Who the f*** cares? Because saturated fat is not causal in heart disease. 
Should I say that louder for the people in the back? Saturated fat is not causal in heart disease. I love French fries, but- uh, Well, I don't care. It's fried can increase saturated fat. Satur what? What the hell are you talking about? No, it doesn't. Anything that's fried can increase saturated fat. What the hell are you talking about? People fry french fries in polyunsaturated fatty acids. Seed oils. Rancid seed oils. They're not high in saturated fats, they're high in oils. Just a lie from this individual here. Given a platform because of the mainstream idea, the fallacious one, that meat is bad for you and eat the plants. That in and of itself, can increase your blood cholesterol. And who cares? Cholesterol is directly linked with the development of heart disease like false. Heart disease is a disease characterized by inflammation, high blood pressure, plaque building up in set sites of the vasculature, that being the high pressure side, the arterial side, the oxygenated side, or rather the side that pumps oxygenated blood to tissues, which can lead to the oxidation and glycation of those LDL particles that can be invaginated into the arterial walls through cytosis from affinity to proteoglycans, thus causing more inflammation, thus causing more chronic blood pressure elevation, decades and decades of this occurring, causing plaque buildup, particularly in areas of the vasculature that actually have low amounts of sheer stress. It occurs in areas that have high amounts of turbulence, that being a dysregulation of a straight flow, swirling and eddying of blood, that causes those areas of the arterial walls to be able to retain more inflammatory mediators and LDL particles for longer periods of time because the blood lingers there for longer periods of time, and that's where the plaque will build up. You can predict where the sites develop. If cholesterol were causal in the heart disease, it would occur in veins as well because they have the same proteoglycan content, effectively. Arteries have more of them, but that's only because proteoglycans, which are responsible for retaining cholesterol and LDL particles really, increase in concentration when the cell that it is contained within is injured from physical stress, i.e. blood pressure. What causes high blood pressure? Carbohydrate consumption, because that raises your insulin, which causes you to retain sodium, which increases blood volume, causing elevated blood pressure. What else causes high blood pressure? Inflammation. What causes inflammation? Plant toxins such as oxalates, or really oxalic acid, that form oxalates when you eat them. Lectins, found in beans, doctor. Aldehydes, found in vast amounts in seed oils, which are what fried foods are, well, fried in. The things you said you love, doctor. Not grounding electrically to the earth, because that causes your blood to be more viscous. That's just common sense right there with the whole viscosity increasing blood pressure. Something's thicker, it needs more pressure to pump it through. It's not saturated fat. Saturated fat can increase blood viscosity. You know what the solution is to that? Drink water. But also blood glucose increases blood viscosity as well. So, end of. Carl Gale says WTF is a cholesterol. Well, cholesterol is just a substance in your body that's all over your body. It's an integral part of the cell membranes that make up your body. But cholesterol- Yes, cholesterol makes up 50% of the cell membranes in every single cell of your body. It is a high molecular weight alcohol and a steroid molecule and a lipid. It makes up the backbone of five major hormone groups, those being androgens, estrogens, glucocorticoids, mineralocorticoids, and progestogen. It aids in digestion because it is a constituent of bile salts. It's actually where the word cholesterol even f comes from. Bile, O-L, just indicates its alcohol nature. It interrupts communication between pathogenic bacteria via a process called the quorum sensing. It aids in vitamin D synthesis and utilization slightly. It's important in maintaining cell membrane fluidity. It actually makes your cell membranes more resilient because it functions as glue between the phospholipids and the phospholipid bilayer, causing them to stick together more like glue. Any excess cholesterol, once again, that is consumed is simply recycled and or excreted by the body as is indicated at the given instance in time. You can not overeat really cholesterol because the only way to do that overeat saturated fat try and do that without the use of carbohydrates and anything sweet to speak of do that with only animal foods good luck can float around in your body and cause blockages in the blood supply to the heart muscle. False. One plus or minus one percent of atherosclerotic plaque is constituted of cholesterol. The only times that people have plaque buildup that is remotely made up of LDL in any significant amount is within people that have familial hypercholesterolemia, a genetic condition characterized by an inability to sequester excess LDL particles and cholesterol from the bloodstream. Then the cholesterol can enter through the arteries through cytosis in order to desperately get rid of of that cholesterol, but these people also have cholesterol deposits in their f***ing eyelids and toes, not applicable to a normal human being.
supply to your brain to blood supply to your legs. There are different false end of cholesterol. There's good cholesterol and there's bad. No, there isn't. Cholesterol is cholesterol. You're talking about lipoproteins that carry cholesterol throughout the body, both of which are good because they're synthesized by your body. Doctor. See, you don't know what the f you're talking about and you wear and vaunt your doctor title as if you do authoritatively. It's ridiculous. You have VLDL, you have LDL, you have HDL, you have IDL, you have SDLDL, you have chylomicrons, you have many, many different carriers of cholesterol. VLDL doesn't really carry cholesterol though. It's a small amount. It mainly carries triglycerides. LDL is a lipoprotein responsible for carrying cholesterol to tissues of the body for repair. HDL is responsible for taking excess cholesterol back to the liver. Therefore, LDL is considered bad because it takes cholesterol to tissues of the body. The theory being that it's also taking LDL to plaque and to the heart, to the arteries, just to dump it there. And HDL being good because it carries excess cholesterol back. F off. Cholesterol. Bad cholesterol is the one you really ought to pay attention to. It's also false. Your cholesterol levels are regulated by your genes and nothing else. You even said this in the beginning with dietary cholesterol. LDL cholesterol. That's the cholesterol. That's not cholesterol. It's a lipoprotein that carries cholesterol throughout the body too high can cause heart attacks and strokes. It's false. There is no evidence of that. Covered it. Minimize the amount of LDL cholesterol that's measured in your blood. X false. Is minimizing the amount of saturated fat. Don't do that. Also, exercise doesn't have an effect on your cholesterol levels. What the hell are you talking about? It really, really doesn't. If anything, it would raise them because you're inducing injury. There are some very, very good and very, very safe medicines that will allow you to lower your blood cholesterol. They are not very good and not very safe. You are referring to statin medications, medications. They're drugs and they're absolute mitochondrial poisons. They poison the mitochondria, therefore, by directly damaging the CoQ enzyme within the mitochondrial membrane in the electron transport chain. Over time, damaging it, which means it slows it down. Slowed mitochondria affects redox potential, which affects the body and increases your risk. Risk, I am going to use that word of multiple different health conditions like diabetes, like Parkinsonian type diseases, like cancer. And over time, we'll actually just destroy the mitochondria, destroying the entire cell and killing it. This will over time cause muscle damage. Why do you think the association between statin taking populations and the presentation within those populations of ALS, an invariably fatal condition, is 11,500%? The same association seen within populations that smoke and the presentation within those populations of lung cancer. They're not F***ing safe, doctor. You're a shill. You're bought and paid for. More common medications for cholesterol is something called Lipitor. The generic name is a... Wow. This man is advocating that people take F***ing Lipitor. You know why? Because he gets paid when people get prescribed the medicine. Shill. It's a very cheap drug. It's incredibly effective and has been shown not only... Oh, it does lower cholesterol. Don't get me wrong. That's contraindicated. Dr. Sunil Rao cholesterol safely, but also prevent heart attacks. No, prevent is a cause and effect statement. There are no studies to inform upon the risks and the downregulation of risks of any heart health outcome or disease process as that relates to any aspect of human nutrition, which is typically what these people are referring to. Over any given period of time, throughout the entire time that type of science has existed, never has been and there never will be. Keep wishing, bud. Harper G64 asks, how do fit athletes have heart attacks at 23, yet people drink, eat badly, and live to 90 plus and never have a heart problem? Okay, that primarily has to do with the difference in the types of heart attacks these people are actually developing and having, rather, experiencing. Fit athletes typically have heart attacks because of inappropriate hypertrophy of their heart muscle. People that are older have heart attacks because of a decades-long accrual of plaque from inflammation, from eating contraindicated foods and living poor lives, usually bereft of exercise, the proper types at least. You can escape this, but as we see with health statistics, it's rare. The reality is, some of heart disease is determined through genetics. Okay, lie. False. Sorry. If you're talking about sickle cell anemia, if you're talking about familial hypercholesterolemia, which really has nothing to do with cholesterol per se, I just explained that, then yes, those are problems that are genetic. Not really anything else. Not that I've seen, so no. This is just to be soothing and to take responsibility off of people's backs. Really what this is actually is it's a desperate attempt to explain away something that they do know the answer to but are blatantly ignoring because they profit off of the old fallacious theory. Well, we lowered your LDL, we did this and that, and you still got a heart attack? Well, eh, just genetics. False. You guys are just wrong. In many cases, you know you're wrong. Choose who our parents are, and heart disease does run in families. Some heart disease runs in families because dietary habits and behaviors and lifestyle habits and behaviors are inculcated within families. Okay? Why a young person could have a heart attack could be because they have some genetic issue with their cholesterol, something called familial hypercholesterolemia.
Right. But we just explain what that actually is. It has nothing to do with cholesterol, really. It's an inability of the body to actually get rid of excess cholesterol carried within LDL molecules because of a gene knockout. This is why not only do they have cholesterol or LDL deposits in the heart, or really in the arteries, they have them in their f***ing eyelids and toes means that there is a genetic abnormality that makes their cholesterol really, really, really high. There are okay, but that's not what causes the disease. You see what you just did there? There are very rare conditions, something called spontaneous coronary artery dissection, where the linings of the blood vessels that supply the heart muscles themselves tear, and that can cause a blockage in the blood flow. Those are really unusual circumstances, and really for all of us, we should be following a healthy lifestyle. Right, but you don't know what that is at all. You have no idea what that is, because you're a cardiologist. You're not trained in diet. You're not f trained in exercise. You are trained in the study of the heart. It's in the f name. So shut your trap. In Chosen asks, what diet is best for reversing heart disease? There oh, this will be great. Studies that suggest a, a plant-based diet can reverse heart disease. Okay, they suggest it, and it's based on bought and paid for information usually. But many times it's just due to poor epidemiology as well. Epidemiology has multiple different problems. First of all, it's an association, not a causation, first and foremost. Second of all, the results of said epidemiological studies, or really the findings, are adjusted for at the end by stacking a bunch of univariate regressions on top of each other. They call it multivariate regression. It inflates the power of the results, but in many cases changes it entirely. It's called fabrication. Scientists report what they observe, not what they think they would have observed if they had done the study differently in an ideal world, okay? They do it because they can't control. Mm. The studies are usually performed on very aged populations in order to ensure the occurrence of deaths within the studies, which means that the results of said studies and the findings of them cannot be extrapolated to any group not studied. Scientists are actually not allowed to post studies within epidemiological journals that disprove their hypothesis, so that's a problem right there. The reporting of relative outcome statistics is a problem instead of absolute outcome statistics, basically percentages and, and ratios and proportions instead of absolute values. That's a problem. Problem. We're done. But also, usually what we do, well, they, really, depend on poorly randomized, completely uncontrolled trials or interventional studies that cannot perform on cause and effect. You can't do that. They usually have appalling statistical power, which means that they're not going to be statistically significant, the findings. And even if they were, it does not represent clinical significance. It's just irresponsible conductions of studies and irresponsible reporting. There are no studies to inform upon the risk or the downregulation of a risk of any heart health outcome or disease process as it relates to any aspect of human nutrition over any given period of time. Human nutrition science is bread and circuses. It's nonsense. With a plant-based diet is it can be very, very difficult to follow and adhere to. But there are some... Okay, well, let's say that the plant-based diet were indicated for human beings. That's not an excuse to not adopt it. Just because you can't adhere to something doesn't mean that you should be doing something else. ...that are important to follow. Increasing the amount of fiber in your diet is... False. Ridiculous. Fiber is a contraindication in the human diet. There are only two associative factors when it comes to diverticulosis, which is an outpouching or breaking down of the distal colon, which can lead to infection and early death if left untreated. Trends towards diverticulitis. Increased number of bowel motions per day and increased fiber intake. People and patients with diverticulosis are put on a low residue diet. It's a low fiber diet in order to, quote, rest the bowel. They know what they're doing. Ask anyone with a colostomy bag what gets stuck in their colostomy bag if it's fiber, from plants or if it's saturated fat and protein from animals. It's the former, spoiler alert. Fiber causes microabrasions in the gut lining, increases mucus secretion subsequently, so it's an inflammatory response. Fiber is fermented into short-chain fatty acids, particularly butyrate, but you can get the exact same molecule from being in systemic ketosis without damaging your gut in the long run. It also ferments, however, into gluconeogenic precursors, particularly lactate and acetate, so you'll be indirectly raising your blood glucose levels via that mechanism as well. Okay, just ridiculous nonsense. Fiber is not essential, and it seems to be contraindicated. We have an appendix for a reason. Really important. Try to make sure that you have four grams of fiber for every hundred calories that you're eating. You're not eating calories and you shouldn't have any grams of fiber ever. You don't eat calories. Calories are units of heat energy. They cannot be brought to rest. When manifested, they are photons. The human body absorbs mass, not energy. Mass impacts your hormones. Energy does not. Mass is different all across the board. Energy, in terms of heat energy, is not. They're all photons of light. They're all the same. Okay. The amount of saturated fat so that it makes up less than 20% of the overall caloric intake. False. Ridiculous. You have no idea what you're talking about. You're out of your lane. You've done no private practice on your own in terms of nutrition and its application to human health and the amelioration or the hedging against of the prevention of heart disease. And if you have, you've done a horrible job at it.
right off. All right, we're done. I skipped through to find the relevant sections because this video is way too long to make an entire video on, but just ridiculous. These people are bought and paid for. They are shills. They will defend their decisions to continue selling drugs because it makes them feel better about selling the drugs. They buy into their own lies in many cases, is what I'm trying to say. It's ridiculous. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, please subscribe to the channel, and please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe to the Patreon once again if you haven't already, and buy my book Contraindicated, a closer look and revision of mainstream health axioms that have perpetuated illness, disorder, or disease for over a century. And also, if you're curious about what the link is on the bottom of the screen, that is a link to a company that sells amazing products. The primary one, the flagship one, being Stem Enhance Ultra, which restores the rate at which you could release your own inherent stem cells from your bone marrow to the rate that you could whenever you were 18 years or younger. If you didn't know, your ability to release stem cells from your bone marrow goes down as you age very slowly to the point where when you're 50 years old, you can only release 50% of what you could before. When you're 70 by 70%, etc, etc, even when fasting. So, if you want to restore the rate at which you could do such a thing, I recommend taking that product. And if you'd like to buy a slew of other products that they also have, I would once again recommend the link below. If you'd like to learn more about those products before buying it, which I totally understand and recommend, of course, I made a video called Cerule Products, which will be linked in the top right corner of the screen that elucidates them quite thoroughly. I'd also recommend that you go to the video in the description below, which is an interview between myself and Professor Bart K about the products that goes into very granular detail that I did not get into in the Cerule Products video. So with that being said, go through that link. You'll get 10% off your order every month if you sign up for monthly deliveries. It is a permanent discount and you'll also get free shipping. Email me at edgoki14 at gmail.com as well if you have any questions or if you'd like to actually find out how to receive those products for free because who in the right mind would not want that? So with that being said, join me next time when we react to someone else that believes himself to be remotely competent about whatever field he's studying in and also others that he was not trained in just because he has the letters DR preceding his name or PhD preceding his name. So till then.